Uh, the regular ECG heart rate at the minute is 29. Oh, who's going to die? The NHS is in crisis, facing challenges from every direction. We can't have continued strike after strike after strike. The pressure is relentless. 230 patients who really don't actually need to be here. Staff and patients are demanding change. We mustn't miss the opportunity that a crisis affords to us. For our health service, every winter is hard. Staff prepare for the worst and hope the worst won't happen. But with a surge in flu cases, a burnt out workforce and a broken social care system, it's the perfect storm. Each day on the wards of University Coventry and Warwickshire Hospital, life-saving and life-welcoming care is given. Baby Shiloh is just hours old. Oh, I'm getting cold. Her first breaths, yeah. tears, touches, all experienced in a service that has already been responsible for her health for months. Born three weeks prematurely to a proud but anxious mother. Given everything that's going on with the NHS at the moment, were you nervous about coming into hospital? It makes you nervous, yeah because you know you're using that service, you're going to need that service at one point in the pregnancy. So it makes you nervous, you know, every time you're going into hospital, you're thinking, oh, is it gonna, is it, am I going to be the next person in that? The government needs to listen to the nurses and the doctors and, you know, people in the NHS and really, really sort it out. The newborn babies on this ward are under the watchful eye of midwife Chanel Griffiths. And like elsewhere in the NHS, her department is struggling with workforce shortages and the demand for more complex care. We need more midwives. It's very busy, it seems to be getting a lot busier. Women are having babies now um, when they're a bit older, which then brings high risk, more risks of them developing complications in their pregnancies. Since its creation 75 years ago, the NHS has brought more than 52 million babies into the world. Shiloh is one of Coventry Hospital's newest patients and she can expect the NHS to care for her throughout her lifetime. Or can she? With the NHS winter crisis, many questions are being asked about the health service's sustainability and its future. But the cracks are already showing. Here on the front line, every minute matters. Yeah, so we've got uh, an elderly lady um, who's it's coming through that she's having or has had a seizure of some description. Dan and Danny from the West Midlands Ambulance Service are responding to a Category 1 call. ECGs are all over the place, to be honest with you. It's Edwina's heart. It's beating so slowly, it could stop. The heart rate at the minute is 2929, symptomatic. They call ahead to Coventry Hospital. Yeah, he's here five minutes to you, mate. He's definitely going to want to release us. Edwina is taken immediately for emergency surgery. Four days later, sat upright next to her hospital bed, it's hard to believe this is the same patient. What was going through your head in the ambulance? I was going to die. No, that's what I said to one of the paramedics. I said, am I going to die? He said, no, not on our watch, you're not. Edwina knows the outcome could so easily have been different. And I've got to praise, I'm glad our lot weren't on strike. I'm glad, because I don't think I'd be here to talk to you if our lot were on strike. In a little over a week, ambulance workers and nurses around the country will stand together on picket lines for the first time, striking not just overpaid, but the conditions in which they are forced to treat patients. Every week this winter, 1,000 people more have died than is usually expected. These excess deaths are in part due to delays in emergency response times and access to care. Does money fix the NHS? Money in the right places fixes the NHS. Short-term projects to put a holding pen for ambulances outside A&E's doesn't fix the NHS. 
short-term projects to buy some hotel beds for care home patients or patients who need to be, leave hospital doesn't fix the NHS. Longer-term investment in workforce, longer-term investment in right-sizing the hospital so we've got the right number of acute beds and recognising the care sector as a rewarding career with progression and presumably appropriate pay will go a long way to helping the NHS. And your message to the unions and the government? I, I don't see how these issues can be resolved without people getting around the table and talking about it. Um, we, 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 we can't have continued strike after strike after strike. There has to be some conversation and that these have to be resolved. Since emerging from the pandemic, the demands here haven't dropped. The usual summer lull is now replaced by ongoing year-long pressures, especially here. The emergency department is usually seen as the front door of the hospital and the pressure that builds up here is then transferred throughout the hospital system. That's usually because of a surge in demand, but it also happens because the hospital can't discharge the patients who are fit to go home quickly enough. A major issue for staff trying to get patients into the hospital is the struggle to get enough patients out. At its peak, this winter, more than 14,000 people declared fit for discharge while waiting for packages of care. Staff vacancies in social care are up more than 50% to 165,000, and the number of people in full-time roles has fallen for the first time on record. It's not just about the health service, it's also about social care. We have a Department of Health and Social Care, but do we really truly work together? Uh, this hospital, like many across the country, will have you know, at least 20% of its beds where if more social care, or nursing care, community care was available, we'd be able to move those patients through. So for example, in this hospital today, we've got about 230 patients who really don't actually need to be here. Their acute illness has been dealt with and they can be moved on. A surge in respiratory illnesses has made an already difficult winter even harder. Lindsay is only 40. She has a serious lung infection but also suffers from multiple chronic conditions and requires complex care. Usually, Lindsay is monitored remotely. But nine days ago, she was rushed to hospital as a Category 1 emergency. Is this the first time you've been in hospital this winter? This winter, I was here three times. Lindsay's consultant, Dr. Asad Ali, says extra community support for patients like Lindsay helps to ease some of the pressure. But the demand is incessant. How do you cope with an ageing population with complex medical problems on the resources that the NHS has? So re resources are limited and, and nothing denying it. And with us all living longer and living with more conditions means, yes, we do need more resources to provide care. But we also need to do an appraisal of how best we are utilising our resources and whether we can get more value. Across the corridor from Lindsay is Sean. She has suffered eight strokes since 2016 and suffers from a chronic lung condition. Sean attended hospital for routine maintenance on her ventilator. That's when Dr. Ali noticed a much more serious issue. She was very unwell, uh, very low oxygen levels, very high carbon dioxide levels. If she'd stayed at home and continued being unwell. Without that intervention from you, what might have happened to Sean? Are you okay to talk about it, Sean, in front of you? I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't you don't? Be, I wouldn't be blatantly told that if I don't carry on you, if I don't need it, I'm going to be dead. I, she would have deteriorated. And, and part of the process of deterioration is to get drowsy and then comatose, and then intervention is required because one can go into a deep sleep. Since the pandemic, respiratory wards have been flat out. There is no end in sight. And all this, the industrial action, the flu, the pressures felt in the emergency department, will have long-term impacts. More than 7 million people are waiting for elective care. A list that was too long before the pandemic has only become longer. 
Professor Kiran Patel is performing surgery on an 88-year-old patient. She's having a pacemaker fitted. It's routine but life-changing operations like these that are delayed when hospitals come under severe pressure. And we mustn't miss the opportunity that a crisis affords to us. And one of the benefits is that it will force us to transform the way in which we deliver health care. We'll need to get better at knowing where our demand comes from, what it looks like. So we need to move from being a reactive health service to being a responsive health service and ultimately being a predictive health service. On the ground floor of the hospital, cocooned from the tears and the trauma, is an oasis of calm. This space provides respite from the intensity for both patients and staff. Multi-faith leaders here provide material and spiritual support. Uh, staff are very tired, but at the heart of that, people are vocational about these jobs. You know, you come to work because you're a caring person who wants to care and wants to be able to be in a caring space. In these times of pressure and, you know, scarcity, that makes that difficult sometimes. And, um, and we have to be kind to ourselves and each other in that, you know, we can't sort of be superhuman. Baby Shiloh should grow up expecting the NHS to be there for her. As it is for Lindsay every time she needs urgent care. And for Edwina when it saved her life. But its future is anything but certain. Ashish Joshi, Sky News in Coventry Hospital.